In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, uh, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. This is where we talk about current events. Uh, we mention scientific studies. Sometimes we talk about our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of the entire episode. Now, the intro lasted 38 minutes. We started out by talking about a new tool for your tool. That's hey, interesting. Hey, tool for tool. Then we talked about blood thinners and coronavirus. Uh, they're showing that treating coronavirus with blood thinners may actually help people quite a bit, which led us to talk about grass-fed meat. Now, grass-fed meat is higher in omega-3 fatty acids than regular meat. Now, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to where if you eat meat regularly, you might want to make the switch to grass-fed meat because omega-3 fatty acids, besides being anti-inflammatory, they also help keep your blood thin. Uh, and right now, that's an important thing. Now, our favorite company for grass-fed meats is ButcherBox. ButcherBox literally delivers it to your door. And they have all kinds of different cuts of meat from tri-tip to filet mignon, or as Justin says it, filet mignon. Filet mignon. Um, but now, ButcherBox had a wait list before. That's how popular they are. But right now, you can go to ButcherBox and they're open. You can sign up, get meat delivered to your door within a few weeks. Uh, so here's what you do. And by the way, we have a discount for you. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get hooked up with a special mind pump discount. Then we talked about how 33% of the Hustle readers, the Hustle is an email newsletter that goes out to millions of people, 33% of them are saying they're moving out of the big city, mm. San Francisco and New York in particular. Mass the, exodus. Yeah, there's a big change going on. Then we talked about alcohol consumption in the country and gun purchases in the country. They're going through the roof. Speaking of alcohol consumption, there's a product called Z-Biotics that you can drink right before you drink, and it prevents all the negative effects you get from alcohol. Now, how does it do this? These are probiotics that are genetically engineered to produce an enzyme that breaks down the negative byproducts of alcohol. It's patented, ladies and gentlemen. You don't find this anywhere, and it really does work. No joke. Try it out for yourself. It's trippy. Uh, we have a discount for you, again, because you're a Mind Pump listener. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z B I O T I C S dot com forward slash mind pump. And you get 10% off their three packs, six packs, and 12 packs. Then we talked about all the companies going bankrupt right now because uh, there's some challenging times. We talked about face mask, mask sex. And that sounds weird, but it's that's kinky. Been recommended. Uh, and then we talked about the effects of the shelter in place on some of our loved ones. And then we mentioned the new social media uh, platform, Parlor. Turns out to be a conservative platform. Uh, Adam Surprise. called it. He called it on the last podcast. Then we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. This person has been a calorie deficit for several weeks. They're seeing results, but their abs are not really getting leaner. What should they do? The next question. This person wants to know what we think about fitness trackers. Uh, the third question, um, this person wants to know what we think about blood type diets. These are diets that tell you to eat a particular way based on your blood type. And the final question, what makes us most proud to be an American? Um, also, all month long, MAPS Strong is half off, 50% off. Now, MAPS Strong is an exceptional program designed to build muscle burn body fat, speed up the metabolism. It's a strongman-inspired workout, so it's really fun. You have different exercises in the program that you are maybe not familiar with. Um, it's really good for the posterior chain. The posterior chain refers to a, all the muscles that make up the back of your body, so your back, your butt, and your hamstrings. If you really want to work on those areas, Map Strong is a great program. Again, it's half off. Here's how you get the discount. Just go to mapsstrong.com, that's M-A-P-S-S-T-R-O-N-G.com, and then use the code STRONG50, that's S-T-R-O-N-G-5-0, no space, for the discount. When's your next uh, hair appointment? What? Why? Is it already bad? Uh, it's, a, it's a little- I just got a haircut. A little disheveled today. A little, little bored. Oh, well, today it is, because I was fast with my, my hair. I did it real- You know you're on camera every day. Huh? Right? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Leave in the comments recognize. right now what you think of my hair. Why don't we see your hair? <laughs> oh, <laughs> da -da -da <laughs> never gets old. That doesn't. It. It'll never get old. Although mine's falling out, dude. I'm not going to be able to use that anymore. 
Uh, you know, in a little bit. Dude, uh, so you guys know that um, machine that was sent to us? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the real loud clacking machine what in the, the corner. So just for the, for the audience, things get sent to us all the time for us to try out. Oh, that's how you're going to play this. Yeah, well, it is. It's uh, true. <laughs> I didn't order it. It was sent to us. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> things do get sent to us. You didn't get excited at all. Yeah. Yeah. Things get sent to us all the yeah. time. Come on, spit it out. To tell try people, out. Tell people what and it is. And so this company contacts us and say, hey, we would love for you guys to try out this machine. Shockwave therapy. It's, uh, yeah, it's something like that, right? Your dick. No, that's and, what it is. Shockwave therapy. Yeah, right? how do you know? That's what it's called. Oh, okay. They, so anyway, They asked me. I passed. You did? Okay, yeah. so- they said Adam will do this for sure. <laughs> so it's this machine that uses shock wave therapy, and it's supposedly it's it's good. It, well, what it was designed for is for erectile dysfunction, but the side effect of it is normal men. It causes, uh, I guess, it, it, it gives you better erections and all that stuff. Anyway, so you know, of course, you know, we're like, I don't want to. What are we gonna do with this? So we're like, wait, well, fine, send one. We'll see what happens. So they sent one over. I plugged it in because I thought you needed to charge it. First of all, the thing looks pretty intimidating it's oh big, yeah it's look, like a spaceship that's <laughs> just gonna eat your member it looks it looks pretty <laughs> intimidating. but i plugged it in the other day we're all in here in the studio because the, the audience need to know this and i thought i had to charge it so i'm looking at it i'm trying to figure out like how do i know if it's charging i push a button and it sounds like and not exaggerating like a jackhammer yes <laughs> <laughs> that's what it does sound like. men at work over here i hey. thought i was broken right yeah. i was like whoa yeah. dude it's like heavy I, construction area i yeah. unplugged it real quick and i'm like okay maybe i did something wrong or whatever so anyway i took it home and i watched the video and the first thing on the video it says place numbing cream on your penis which is not always that's not a good sign You're like wait a minute yeah like does why do i need to numb that? it yeah. no I didn't get no numbing cream with it. Yeah, where do you go pick that up? Well, I didn't. I thought I could handle this. Oh so anyway, wow! Uh, so anyway, I so do you do a light dab or you do like a whole like handful? very ballsy of you. It was. No, yeah. So <laughs> I so like so I brought it home. I told Jessica about it and I was la- kind of laughing. I'm like, oh, I got this thing. I'm gonna try it out or whatever. So I brought it home. Watched the video. Brought it home. She was downstairs and she's like, I'm gonna take a nap right now. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go upstairs and, and, time. And, and try this thing out. I yeah. told her. Yeah. She's so, sleeping. and you know, she's pregnant. She's moving into the third trimester. She takes naps and all that stuff. So I go upstairs and I plug it in and I turn it on. And that's literally the sound it makes when it's doing what it's supposed to. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun. And she's like, freaks out, right? Runs upstairs. What the hell is going on? I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know. But anyway, I, I, I tried it. I don't know. If I'm it, remodeling. I don't know if it does anything yet. I've only used it once. Oh. Uh, so I can't tell. Probably more. So come on, give me a little more detail here. What do you, I, mean, I see, I saw the app, by the way, if you what follow my story, like? I did a video of Sal holding it. So you saw it. If you follow me, mm-hmm. I did. It, it's, Apparently it, I, this isn't me saying it works. I don't know. I don't notice anything yet. I've only used it once. And I don't have an issue there, so I don't know what I'm going to see necessarily, what, what kind of improvement or whatever I'm going to see. But the the testimonials apparently are really good. It's approved, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for erectile dysfunction, which yeah. means there may be some science. Because if it lasts for four hours, aren't you supposed to see a doctor? That's Viagra, yeah. dude. That's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, that's just what I've been told. Did yeah. you hear that COVID story? I shared that with you, I think. Oh, no, yeah. What was it? I, yeah. I, 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 you know, I, Justin always has the good stories like that. Yeah. And I just feel like he, he gets he gets the use. He sent one my way. Yeah, yeah, I sent him this guy that was like uh, 65, and he went in uh, with COVID, and some, he had like this weird abnormality where because they set him up with a ventilator, something about it ended up giving him more like more. He had something, right? Like there had some sort of a, like a blood clot or restriction or something. Mm. Going oh, on. oh, so they must have given him some vasodilators yes, or something. They gave him something to treat COVID and it ends up happening as a byproduct. He gets this four hour erection. He's like 65. Just won't go away. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. That reminds me of a bad joke. This uh, this this nurse is touring another uh, new nurse around the, uh, the the hospital, and they're walking by, and they walk by a room, and there's a guy just you know furiously jerking off, and the new nurse is like, "What the hell?" And she's like, "Oh, sorry, that guy's got like a he's got a condition." <laughs> That's Roger. Yeah, he he has a condition. <laughs> he, he needs to do that, like just ignore him or whatever. And then they walk into another room, and there's a guy getting a, a, a he's getting a blowjob from one of the nurses. She's like, "What the hell kind of hospital?" Like, no, 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 same condition. He's got better insurance. <laughs> that's an old, that's that's an pretty, old yeah, I've never heard that. That's an old joke. That's but good. anyway, so I, I so the way is that you, Kaiser the, yeah. the way you use it is you PPO. You, it ha, it like it it does it sounds like a jackhammer and it kind of does jackhammer a little bit. 
and it's got a metal tip of all things. Oh, man. It is intimidating. It is intimidating. Yeah. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to hold your 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 package and kind of stretch it or whatever. Mm. And you put this thing on the side and it goes da 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 and you move up and down in a line real slowly and then you move in different segments. And it, it doesn't it sounds hurt. like medieval torture to it me. It doesn't hurt, but it is a little bit uncomfortable. But I don't know. We'll it, see what it, happens. So no, no like arousal for you for this. If you can get aroused while this thing is hammering the side of your, your penis. <laughs> you should you look into S&M. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. you yeah. got some other stuff going on. Now, is is uh, are, do penis pumps fall in the category of erectile dysfunction yeah. tools? They, they are approved, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, one that's one of the first. So uh, I wonder how it rates compared uh, to that. Speaking I of that, idea. I had to explain what that was to my kids because of Austin they found Powers. Yours? Oh, sorry. Oh, that came, yeah, that I found mine. So, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's this in that movie. The, I forgot that was in the movie. They're like, oh, and one penis pump? Yeah. And then it, my kids were dying laughing. When, I'm like, oh, when great. Sweet, when receipt for Swedish penis yeah. pump? Yeah, penis like, does it work? What's that do, Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it, it's for blown up balloons. It, yeah, it makes <laughs> that's what I would say. Bigger? Yeah. Those, those, <laughs> did you tell them that? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, no, great. Yeah, I was like, if, I don't I don't know that it really works, but, you know, some people think it does. Yeah, the, well, those those were- It temporarily works. Those yeah. were- So why? I've, I had one. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought one, like, uh, I don't know, like, so, so I had, there, so I was told that- Is that one of those things you buy when you're old enough to get that shit, you know? Yeah, you yeah. Like, turn 18, you're like, yeah. porn magazine. Actually, yeah. what, made me t- what made me take it was that I was taking growth hormone back, this is way back when, <clears throat> and my buddy said that he was recommended from his doctor, said that if you take growth hormone with that combination of that, you will see, like, a significant, and we, all my buddies and I were like, there's no way, and then there's there was two of us that were like, fuck this, let's just try it. let's just see what's really? up. Yeah, yeah. And you definitely there's a difference temporarily. I mean, mm-hmm. because you're but it's because you're sucking a ton it's of like blood. getting a pump. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. So you any muscle. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not that like that. Where it's just like, oh, I want to try and impress my girl. <laughs> it's just, I'm gonna go do that for a half hour before. I just woke up like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's kind of like it's kind of like the guy doing push. Uh, it's kind of like the guy doing yeah. push-ups in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. sooner or later yeah. she's gonna you find start out. Doing, like right? helicopter yeah. just to get noticed. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. Sooner or yeah. later she's gonna you find out. You see anything different? Huh? See what I've been doing? <laughs> it's, come a, on, it's like the typical guy, you know, calling out his wife. Hey, honey, can you come in here real quick? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, why? No, no, no. Just come in real quick. So uh, anyway, so what's going on? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Dude, what's going? On? What's it's why? the equivalent of like when they get uh, their hair done. Yeah, like, you, you know, know, so, you know <laughs> yeah. they're just <laughs> waiting for you to say something. You know, <laughs> you're just like, what? What am I here for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hot, right? Uh, do you notice yeah. anything? <laughs> it's I'm hot. gonna do that. I'm, I'm naked because it's hot. But anyway, so what's happening? There's a massive change right in front of you. Hey, but speaking of 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 COVID and the blood and the you know stuff to do the blood so there's reports that are coming out that covid is really a blood disorder more than it's a respiratory uh, right. disease because it's causing all these blood clots and strokes and stuff in young people and all these issues yeah so these they're they're starting to treat covid uh, with blood thinners, and they're seeing a higher survival rate. Oh, that yeah, makes I've sense about that. the the heart on then, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, that that's makes what sense just then. reminded me of that. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So they're giving people like high doses of blood thinners, but apparently, like aspirin and, and, and normal standard blood thinners, probably a good idea to prevent some of this stuff. Um, right. Omega three fatty acids, but not ibuprofen, because then that like uh, tends to exacerbate. The you know problem, what? I don't. Right? I think There's that like I think they. Cells. I think they redacted that. Oh, did they? I think so. Oh, I didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, but um, you know, uh, omega three fatty acids. If your fatty acid profile is off, um, it, it makes your blood thicker, and omega three fatty acids help thin the blood, which is you know in a natural way, which is good for you. Here's one of the things about grass fed meat that I like, because I know there's always this like. Oh, grass-fed meat versus regular-fed meat. It's not, not that big of a difference. doesn't make a big difference. It does if you eat red meat every single day like I do and the quantities that I eat. I right. eat at least yeah. a half a pound to a pound of red meat most days. Yeah. The difference between grass-fed meat and traditional you know, grain-fed meat is big enough when you add up the cumulative effects. That's what I don't. I don't uh, like yeah. when people try and tease that out and be like, "Well, if you compare one or the other, we're splitting hairs." Well, I mean, yeah, I'm splitting hairs in, in one situation. Exactly. But if you eat red meat on, I'm with you every it's day. It's volume. It's yeah. rare that a day that I don't have red meat. So, right. and that's why I kind of live by that rule for me. Like, okay, when I'm preparing at home, ninety percent of the time. 
I'm using my butcher box. That's just right. that's, that's the goal is I'm going to use that. And then if I go out to a restaurant, I'm not going to tell Katrina, no, we can't go to the grill because they don't use grass fed beef. Hundred percent. I base like that's that's like the building block for my meal. You know, I start with that, and then I'll build like you know some kind of dinner or lunch or something around that these days, and it's made my life so much more easy to like handle that. It is, look, I've done on my myself personal experiments where again I eat a lot of red meat. I, I feel good on it; it makes me strong. But I do notice a distinct difference between when I eat a lot of grass fed versus when I eat a lot of grain fed. I've done this where, you know, like my butcher box ran out a while ago, right? I, I, we we had guests or whatever, and so I, I served up all of them. We had, we didn't have any. So I went to Costco and I got a bunch of just traditional, you know, grain fed. Right. And I was eating my normal, like I said, half a pound to a pound. Some days I eat more than that. Some days it's it's one and a half pounds of of red meat every single day. And I did notice that I was stiffer. I noticed that I was a little bit more inflamed and I had to increase my intake of omega-3 fatty acids supplement wise to try to offset it a little bit. Then when I went back to grass fed, um, because I, I got my my delivery. I, I noticed the difference again. Digestion was better and my inflammation was down. So again, you're right. One meal, splitting hairs. A few meals, splitting hairs. But if you eat red meat all the time and then you, you do that over time, so like you know, a year, two years, three years, five years, the rest of your life. Oh, yeah. It's going to add up. Yeah, it totally makes a difference. Yeah. It totally makes a difference to get those kinds of th- you know foods that are going to give you you know a better... I don't know, better, fe- better feeling or whatever. Uh, you guys know how we were talking about uh, the other day. We're, we've been all of us have been reading a lot of like homes, real estate stuff, and like uh, I read this article. On, oh, I'm crazy! I'm reading like a hundred hours uh, at least uh, a couple weeks, <laughs> like seven fifty. <750, laughs> yeah, something like, like, like seven hundred fifty a yeah, year, or something like that. At least. Uh, so I was reading an article in, in uh, I think it was a hustle. They and then they they actually did a poll with their their readers, and they I think they have you know hundreds of thousands of of readers that are reading the hustle on a daily basis. Thirty-three percent of their their readers, so are thirty-three point three percent of their readers. That's a lot. So 30. <clears throat> are moving in the next two months. Wow, out of state, like leaving their state. Thirty-three. The number one and number two uh, places: New York City and San Francisco. Oh, that's well, leaving San Francisco. Yes, makes leaving perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Totally. So my my Austin, I have, Denver, Nashville, Texas. Those okay, are all the big. So places. I have cousins, and my brother lives in San Francisco. I have a lot of family members that live in San Francisco and have lived in uh, lived there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Here's what's happened. Over the last Gavin Newsom happened. Yeah, that's well, what happened. maybe part of it, right? Uh, this is what's happened over the last ten years. I have cousins who have lived there for over ten years. This is what they've told me because we've had these conversations, and they used to say how much they loved it there. Now the well, the homeless problem got really bad. The crime started getting really bad, and now with the shutdowns, they've lost the like the allure of the city because, yeah. like my brother tells me, the reason why I liked San Francisco was I could walk outside of my apartment. It's a beautiful place. I could go to restaurants. I could go to bars. I could hang out. Now that everything's closed, I'm stuck in my apartment paying a million dollars just to stay in this tiny apartment right. yeah. when I could go live somewhere else. I, that's got to be happening. Well, and in are- addition to that, we've seen this across the board with uh, a, a lot of these companies, especially in the Silicon Valley, right, in San Francisco, Bay Area. That are no longer requiring people to come into work. Yeah. So why are you going to spend so much rent? <clears throat> yeah. So why? Yeah. Why live downtown San Francisco if in and stay? I, I, how annoyed would you be paying? Like, well, I think the average rent there is like thirty eight hundred to four thousand dollars a month for mm-hmm. a little studio or two bedroom yep. type of apartment. Paying that downtown San Francisco can't go out like you're saying in the restaurant. Yeah. Your company tells you work from Don't home. Don't come in. Yeah, work from home. Yeah. I would be pissed. So I'm dude. stuck in a tiny apartment. Way overpriced, you know, rent. Uh, yeah, that's a no-brainer, dude. Yeah. I'll t- my, um, I think my brother paid at one point. It was a two-bedroom or one-bedroom. was like over fifty-five hundred bucks a month, and that Ooh. was a good deal. Mm. You know, it's a, it's insanely expensive. Yeah. Do you think there. that's going to affect uh, the, the the pricing? And do you think it, there's going to be a, a, a drop because of this, or, or is it uh, still going to stay the same? If right? the demand goes down, it's got to. The price has to. Yes go down. and no. This is what. So my theory on it and what I'm seeing happening right now is that we because of interest rates so low we're still seeing uh bidding wars on houses we're oh, still I seeing see real estate selling like crazy but mainly investors right? yeah that's what i that's my, my theory speculation, right yeah. now eventually if you believe that infusing all this money into the economy like we've done right is eventually going to cause inflation right mm-hmm. yeah. so a, a, as a result of that to, to slow that down i think sal and i were talking about this yesterday off air to slow that down, you're going to see raising interest rates. Raising interest rates right now, inv- investors um, are going crazy because the the interest rates are so low. You can buy a property somewhere, rent it out, and actually make cash flow on it. So. 
they're all going like nuts. That's because it's two point nine, three point three. Yeah, when it starts to get low. when it starts to get to five and six percent, it's you're never you're not going to be making cash on cash anymore. So that's going to pull all the investors out. And then that's going to start to slow down. All it that also process. depends on the market. San Francisco has really, really strict uh, rent control, which comp which totally disincentivizes uh, investment because you're oh, not yeah. going to want to invest somewhere if you can't make your your money back. So they have really, really tight uh, rent control, um, and the allure of living in a city is really starting to drop because you can work remotely. There's, uh, you know, the, the the allure of the city is gone now that everything's closed. Um, in a lot of these cities, crime, like, and I know in New York, crime has exploded yeah. uh, recently. San Francisco, crime has exploded. I know that one of the laws in California now is you could do something like, I believe you could you could rob up to nine hundred dollars or something like that, and it's a misdemeanor. So that's still in in effect. Yeah. Because that was like before the whole COVID thing. With you were starting to see that. Uh, from some of the the homeless community coming in, and who was saying that? Was it you or it, Sal that was yeah, talking about in, in like they, they, CVS, and they would like get the the exact amount uh, that was basically like under like oh, six dude, or nine dollars. Oh, my, my my brother said they would walk so because Walgreens, which is was a staple in San Francisco, you'd see yeah, that on the corner. Walgreens, that's starting right. to move out because they're not getting protected because people would rob. Then they call the cops. The cops would take them in, and they'd spit them out the next day, and they wouldn't. They wouldn't That's really get That's crazy. Put. And yeah. and it, my brother said literally he saw people taking deodorant and hairspray and stuff like that. They'd throw it in a garbage bag. Then they'd walk out, and the employees are not stopping them anymore because it's a waste of time. Then they're walking out, going around the corner, putting selling the, it, putting the deodorant <laughs> and hairspray on the floor, <laughs> yeah, and selling them for cheaper. Dude. What a shit show! Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Just crazy, but wow. some places it's just so much lawlessness, you know, that's been allowed, you know, with the, the the mask of good intentions. Yeah, that that's been like the theme I've seen in a lot of these major cities that are just crumbling right now. Yeah. Are you guys reading anything on like alcohol and consumption? So that is it still like skyrocketing? Yeah, I know, I know it was before. Yeah, two two. Here's two statistics that <laughs> when you hear them together, I know my, like, mine hasn't slowed down at yeah, all. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure I'm not alone. You know, <laughs> two statistics that when you say them together are kind of scary. Uh, alcohol consumption is exploding. I don't know if it's at all-time highs, but it's high. And uh, gun purchases, all-time highs. So that is, <laughs> that I don't is know a, if that's a nice yeah, thing to do. That's an all-time high. We're, we're on pace to, to set a record of more guns purchased in a year ever. Ever. Yeah. 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 And you know what's funny about this? Like it's new ownership. Yes. It's a huge percentage of new gun owners. And of those new Over gun 50, owners- Over 50, right? And of the new gun owners- Women. A big percentage yeah, of them yeah, yeah. are women that are purchasing- wow. My buddy- I think it's great. I mean, personally. Well, I think if you're responsible and you learn how to use it, um, then yeah, it is- I don't, Yeah, I, I don't think- a bunch of these girls are going buying guns so they could go rob stores. No, I think, I think it's a home protection. But that's the deal, thing right? is if they go through that, they learn how everything works. Like you know, it's very empowering if you if you go through all those steps. Yeah, and, th and there's also uh, revolvers are are they're selling more and more revolvers. Revolvers are t uh, historically new buyers like to get them. They're e they're easy to to load, easy to use. They don't jam. Um, you know, they're, they're just, they're a nice kind of first gun. Talking about guns and alcohol, you know, I haven't, uh, we were, wa obviously we were watching gun. We got Smith and Wesson's right? we bought that stock. Right. But I haven't been watching alcohol stock. Have you guys been, wa I haven't watched anything like that. Doug, have you, do you, do you have any uh, 411 on that? Yeah. No idea. None. What, what would even, what would be the stock? What would even yeah, be like, what's the ticker? Public. Well, Bud, Bud, <laughs> what is Bud, Johnny Walker? No, no, no. What's Budweiser? Budweiser's what? Anheuser-Busch. Anheuser-Busch is one of the biggest ones, mm. right? they mm. they have a ton of, of, of brands underneath them. I know that. Yeah, um, would be one to look at. I'm curious to see. White how Claw's exploding. <laughs> Who owns White Claw? <laughs> I don't know. White Claw's owned by somebody. Yeah, they are. Uh, I don't. That's a good question. I don't know. There's a lot of competitors now to White Claw. There are. Yeah, we you were, see them all over the place. Well, you we saw you, uh, Anheuser High Bush, Noon or whatever Anheuser Busch did their response to that. They created their their own line that is. Like, did they? Yeah, yeah they, the their Bud seltzer Light, water, yeah. seltzers. Or, yeah, because we, when we were up in Tahoe um, and we were celebrating the fourth, uh, that's what I did. I went to the grocery store and I bought uh, a bunch of White Claw. And there were a lot of different brands that were kind of similar. So I had, there's like Truly, I think yeah. is one of them. And Truly, yeah. Yeah. You know, wasn't there a drink like that when we were kids? Zima? Yeah, Zima, dude. It was yeah. Zima, right? Yeah, yeah, it was made fun it was of. so different. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know dude, this guy's got to defend it over here, dude, because he's a big White Claw <laughs> yeah, guy. I mean, I'm a closet White Claw oh, guy. Dude, yeah. Yeah. It's such a sorority it trick. Yeah. You see it keeps his figure. Yeah. yeah. A, yes. Come on, man. I don't want all those calories. <laughs> I want, the, I want the party without all the calories. Dude, it's where, a beautiful where, match. Where were we? We were somewhere where I forgot where it was, and I think it was you guys. Wasn't there a place we went where they 
vaporized alcohol. Yeah, and you could that breathe was it in. Uh, that was San Diego or um, it was no, it was Austin. South. Was it Austin? I'm pretty sure it was in Austin. What we went was to a bar. That? Yeah, it was in Austin. We went to this bar and they had like that was one of those those options. They had uh, they vaporized the, the alcohol and you like basically inhaled it through a bag. It was, <laughs> it was like you know like like it was a little uh, uh, air bong or something. Yeah, and you got and you, you felt got, oh immediately a head rush. Big you, head you rush. felt yeah. a little drunk, but it only lasted. It was like, a different. It was a different. Uh, high though for but sure. and, but you got kind of drunk for like 30 seconds or a minute remember that and yeah. it would go away yeah and it was like 15 dollars a shot or which whatever probably the, the co2 getting you high right <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's probably killing more brain cells yeah. Is what you felt. Like, yeah it's probably yeah. It. <laughs> lack of like smoking a banana yeah. peel yeah. Yeah. did yeah. you guys see on the forum uh who was it i think it was let me see i took a picture of it so i could give them a shout out it was uh chris and, and rachel phillips no so they've been on our forum for a little while and they took a picture or a video of them Drinking the Z biotics and then basically oh, they, they partied. Or oh, they did what we did kind of deal. Yeah. So oh, they, I didn't see that. Yeah. So they were reporting in the forum how they felt. And then, yeah, well, the next day, what was the results? Well, for them? this is from Chris. Chris said uh, it worked like a charm. Even had a shot of tequila, and it's been about a year since I've been that brave. So they, he had about six drinks. Wow. And he says he's totally sold. I tell you, that stuff is it's weird. It works. It's really, really. You still get exhausted, but I mean, you don't have a lot of the effects. Like I, man, if I get too hammered, it's it's the whole next day's ruined. Well, it's not weird when you know the science. Like yeah, once right. you understand the science, it makes sense. It's weird because I have tried about every. Because for me personally, I'm a, obviously a fitness guy, right? I love working out. I love feeling good. I love you know good performance. And what always deterred me from alcohol was a. It took away from my strength and muscle gains, which was very important to me when I was in my 20s. So if, if I went out, I didn't drink because of that. Yeah, I'm just like, Same yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Number two, I hated feeling like shit the next day because then I couldn't get a good workout. And every time I drank, yeah. no matter what amount I had, the next day I would feel kind of shitty. So I just never – but I tried every remedy in the book. I tried everything. Yeah. To, in order to to see if I could offset the effects, I tried every nutrient combination. I tried every, you know, charcoal activated charcoal helps a little bit, mm -hmm. especially with the upset stomach. But you still, you know, if you have see, a few I drinks, was the opposite of you guys. I would like work out to support my drinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or I would like incorporate which is, like a, which is the games true. around the drinking where I would like you know we'd play home run derby with uh, cakes, which is the true inspiration of him becoming a trainer right here. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I had to make up for my frat, frat boy Rick. <laughs> Here. For, yeah, <laughs> I need to. He's like, I should get money, pay, get paid for doing all this, this fitness. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's got to. <laughs> but I mean, Zbiotics works so good. It's almost, uh, it's almost unbelievable. You literally feel like, you know, like nothing the next day. Didn't you say that you was it? Were you trying out for the for your college football team? Oh, you, you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> was that yeah. a color guard? It was color guard. <laughs> they actually, uh, hey, um, no, I. That's exactly what happened. I, I was debating on. Uh, going out because uh, we were actually uh, living in this fraternity house, which I wasn't part of the fraternity, but my friends were. And uh, they, they had this big party for one of my friends. It was like his big brother, big bro reveal or something. I don't know what huh? the fuck they call that. But uh, so he, big brother reveal. <laughs> yeah. Like they give you a big brother. That's like right, part right. of the oh, mentor. He's, yeah, he's mentor. your mentor. mentor whatever, so he yeah. invited me to that. And I'm like, no, no, no. I got this thing tomorrow. You know, I got to be sharp and be on my game. Because you were trying out for the Because I was trying out for the team. And then like literally, uh, I don't know, five minutes later, I'm doing shots. You know, yeah, with with everybody and like having a good time and then like oh no so I'm gonna pay for this tomorrow. Hundred percent influenced by some chick. <laughs> totally, there's <was> chicks. There. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's like no, like, no, I'm she, not doing it. Hot actually, chicks walk in the door. I vividly okay, pour yeah. me a shot. Hundred yeah, percent. It was all guys and then the girls <laughs> yeah. came and then one gave me. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Uh, of course. And so then <laughs> totally compromised my my entire integrity of like yeah I'm gonna be like totally sharp and ready and it and it ruined my you know obviously ruined my performance the next day and I was like yakking and everything. <laughs> After I was done running, I was running like in a diagonal. You know, I wasn't even running straight. Yeah, I would have had such a better like forty time if I was just running straight. V eight uh, commercials, bro. Uh, V eight commercials. Oh yeah, remember those stupid commercials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, do you know how many? <laughs> but it was meant to be, right? Yeah, exactly. That's how, that's how I look at you it. You could have become a professional football yeah. player. Never and, made it to mind pump. And yeah. Adam and I would have to do this you by guys ourselves. Would be like. <laughs> Never like, worked. Not even yeah. a thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank God you never became a professional football player. <laughs> no, that would have been the worst. Because of that one stupid mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that exactly what would have happened. <laughs> yeah, no, so, no, no, yeah. no. Hey, are you guys seeing all the uh, the bankruptcies that are happening still? No. What do you okay, mean? Okay, so <clears throat> I got a I got a new list. Just, I mean, obviously, there's way more than this. You but, say that with zero sensitivity. Hey, guys. I know. <laughs> Sales I failures. I know. I know. I know. I should I should be Yikes. more sensitive to that because I know a, a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, are, it's bad. Hurting right now. L- l- listen, these are just some of the bankruptcies that are happening since COVID, right? Brooks Brothers. Yeah, I saw that one. Chuck E. Cheese. What? Yeah. I thought they pivoted. They did, and oh. they obviously still file for bankruptcy, so they're they're you know undercover well, pizza on DoorDash. Well, the last wasn't... place you want to go with COVID is the freaking balls that you jump in and play. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a oh, so breeding ground of- you, Did you hear? I think Justin brought it up, or maybe I brought it up. Brought up what they did, though, to pivot. Yeah, yeah, they were doing delivery. Yeah, but they weren't doing it under, under a different name. Under no, different it was name. some some racist Italian name they made up. Right. Well, yeah, but you know what? <laughs> Sm- I thought that was really clever because no- <laughs> nobody ever said, okay, no one ever said, oh, go to Chuck E. Cheese. They have the best pizza. No. Nobody ever. No, nobody. Right? Uh, you take them there for the yeah, kids stuff, no right? One. So that was a really smart move, I thought. I go for the animatronics. Obviously, <laughs> didn't, didn't pan out. So uh, Chuck E. Cheese, 24-hour fitness, obviously, we've talked about that. Yeah. GNC, we've talked about that. Yeah. Hertz, we talked about that. J. Crew, I didn't know this. Mm. I love J. Crew. Mm-hmm. JC Penny. Oh, that's too bad. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like J. Crew too. Yeah. Sal, JC Penny. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Ross dress for less. Sal. <laughs> where am I uh, where am I gonna get my shoes? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is such and, a bummer. And, and that br- yeah. it brings me back. Remember JC Penny catalogs with your kid? You know, Do I remember? Of course you that's did. Be- you the mean, lingerie that's area. That's before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I know, I know. Take that in the National Geographic. Right. You're having a good time. <laughs> that's hey man. Yeah. Uh Neiman and Marcus. Pier One, uh, Papyrus, I don't know what that is, Dean and DeLuca, Fairway, True Religion, Roots USA, Gold Gym, uh, John Bravados, uh, Models, and Advantage, the rent a car place. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, rent a cars. You know, I wonder if there's going to be mm. a lot of, a lot of, Good prices on cars for sale after that, right? Because all those rental car companies have to sell little fire oh, I didn't cars think about or whatever. That. Yeah, I wonder how that works. I don't mm. know how that. Works. That's how, that's where mine came from. Mine was a rental car. Oh, it was. Uh huh. Uh huh. You you only had like what twenty thousand or just less? twenty thousand miles. Yeah. It's not yeah. Right. Buying a new car doesn't make any sense. I swear. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. difference in price is just. Yeah, they should be making me feel like an asshole there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both you guys are assholes. <laughs> yeah. I bought my Easy. used. Not because of that though. Yeah. Dude, uh, you want to hear a, a, a stupid uh, article I just read? Absolutely. Sometimes I sometimes I think to myself. I love those. Why, why, why do people even, uh, why do they even write these articles? So the article was about um, uh, sex during the COVID era. And uh, this is what they said. (laughs) This is what they recommend in the article. Instead of saying, don't have sex with people that you don't know very well or don't live with. This is what they say. If you have an out of house coronavirus crush, besides keeping your mask on. So number one, let's just stop right there. Wear a mask. While you're having sex with someone. Oh, like the, the fluid exchange yeah. doesn't matter. That's fucking weird. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to yeah. wear a mask and a condom yeah. and then you're whatever. Yeah. Um, besides doing that, avoid kissing, oral to anal contact, and anything else that involves semen or urine. Well, there goes my plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's everything Justin does. <laughs> yes, yes. All of it at once. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all minus the block of cheese. I mean, that's pretty much yeah. cancels everything. <laughs> how about Friday this, night? How about eat this cheese with this mask on? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they're saying wear a mask when you're having sex. Why don't they just say the obvious, which is you probably yeah, should just, not go and have sex with uh, with with random people right now. How dare COVID. you say abstinence? Yeah. 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 Well, how no, dare you? That's just can't cr- that. How, wouldn't that be weird though? You, you meet someone, you, you're like talking, I'm like, hey, that's- Nobody is doing that. That's where I'm at. Nobody's doing that. And you know, I saw- I love all these rules they just come up with. Yeah, I saw our like buddy Mark go on like a big rant too, That I, and, I, and I agree with him on this too. Like, uh, what's the percentage? I'm going to say some crazy, ridiculous number, like 80 or 90% of the people- are not even like doing the mask thing correctly. Mm-hmm. I see people with their noses hanging out of it. Probably a mask they haven't washed for freaking th- two months now. Like, yeah. it's like ridiculous. Or wearing it in their car by themselves. Like <laughs> that. Did you see that there was a guy that got in a car accident? So, yeah, he like suffocated. He was. He passed out he because passed out. he passed out because he was wearing his mask while driving. What? Why are you wearing a mask in your car? Yeah. You're by yourself. And why'd you put chloroform on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's, not a good move. Don't, try to keep it clean, dude. Don't yeah. wear any of Justin's masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, smell this real quick. Yeah. Oh, you went to sleep. You gotta wear your mask. Yeah, dude. I've seen have you seen people like this driving yeah, their a cars? Lot, a lot of people. With masks on. Yeah, I see it all Why? Time. I don't know. What yeah, are you that, doing? No, that, that one actually irritates me. You know why? Because there's so much bullshit news out there. Everyone's fucking confused. It's true. There's so much, there's so much from each direction that yeah. people are like, ah, just I'm just I think I'm doing it right. This no. is the one thing. 
something keeping it from entering my body. Yeah, no, it's true. Dude, you know, on a sad note, I'll tell you what, man, you know, and I, I said this before on the podcast, we don't, we're, we're, we're strongly considering the obvious risks of potentially contracting and spreading this virus. But what we're discarding are all of the downstream other effects that could potentially happen from really, really strong, you know, measures at trying to prevent virus spread. For example, okay, I went to go visit my grandparents and I haven't seen them. They haven't seen anybody for three months besides FaceTime. Yeah. They haven't seen or been around anybody physically. Yeah, it's now, rough. Now, my grandmother had recently had a very small stroke. She's okay. Everything's fine. But because of that, my my her her daughter, you know, my mom, her sisters are over there. Everybody's been social distancing, but everybody's there trying to help or whatever. So we basically have been able to go over there because it was a scary, scary situation. My mom, my my grandmother's older. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's ninety. My grandmother's almost as old, and she almost you know that, that's scary, right? When she had she had a stroke, right? So we're all like, let's just we got to go there. Be careful, you know, wear your mask and everything, but go, and we need to see them. And I went there. I haven't seen my grandparents in three months. Their, their, both of their health declined in that three month period in such a quick, uh, so fast. Oh, yeah. Because when you're, especially when you're older, yeah. you need human contact. Community is part of health. Dude, I, this reminds me of, so I had a client years ago, I'll never forget this. It, and it, it was such a powerful, powerful example to me. I had a client that I trained for a long time. Uh, Barbara was her name. And she was in her uh, 80s. And I trained her for six years. And, you know, over this period of time, you could kind of see a little bit of dementia. I don't know if you could call it dementia, but she would kind of repeat herself or she'd tell me a story that she told before. And maybe there was a little bit of decline, maybe over that six-week period, uh, six, excuse me, six-month period. But it, was, it wasn't super perceptible. Anyway, one day uh, when she was taking a shower, she slipped, broke her leg, so she couldn't come to the gym anymore. After she healed, her doctor, or excuse me, her daughter said she wasn't going to pay for personal training anymore because it was her daughter that was hiring me. So I didn't see this woman for, I don't know what it was, like eight months, something like that. So I trained her for six years, twice a week, religiously. Didn't see her for about, I don't know, seven or eight months. Went to the grocery store, ran into her. She didn't recognize me at all. Wow. She didn't know who I was. I went up to her. I'm like, hey, Barbara. And she looks up at me like super confused and she goes, who are you? And I'm like, it's Sal, I, I train you and this and that. And she's like, I don't know who you are. And her daughter was right there. She's like, oh, you know, her, her health has really declined. And I knew it was because she stopped exercising. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't exercise and you're in your 20s and 30s, your health declines, but it's slow. When you're that old, yeah. if you take your foot off the gas compounding. You, very fast, and that's what I saw with my grandparents. Not that they stopped exercising, but they stopped seeing their grandkids. They stopped seeing their their their, their kids and their great grandkids. They stopped that human. Well, we see you see extreme interaction. We see extreme examples in this when, like a you know, a spouse dies at like seventy. You ever seen someone like that? Like oh, I, yeah. you, they look like they age like ten years in that one year after they one died. It made me feel so bad. And I talked mm -hmm. to my 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 mom and and all my uh, my aunts and uncles, and I said, listen, I said we still should be very careful. We should social distance. If you have any, you know, if you have a little bit of a cough or whatever, fever, and also don't expose yourself to other people and then come here. I said, but I think that the health, the negative health effects of them not seeing us outweigh the maybe risk that they may get of us being here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I totally agree. I think it's definitely a consideration to see, uh, you know, how we can all sort of like uplift our, our the, I mean, our mental state. Like, I think that's such a vital part of our health yeah. that we have to really consider. Yeah. Do you see that? Do you see the difference in your kids because yeah. they can't go to school and be around exactly. friends? Exactly. There's another point. It's Man, just, when yeah. we were up in, uh, we were up in Tahoe with all the kids together, it was, it was so great. Yeah. To see them all playing and all running new energy, and hanging out. yeah, because it's they're interacting. They're, we're we're social creatures. Yes, you know, to to remove that part of it is is to remove a little bit of humanity. That's what I mean. We are. We it's going to be very interesting when we see because it's it, we're still in the thick of it, right? And there's then it is it's so political right now. It oh, shouldn't oh, be political. I know it should, but it, it is. Right? It is what it is. But in in a, in about a year, we're going to be able to look back. And you're going to be able to see like a very clear indication of when COVID hit and when we all decided to shelter in place. And there's things that we've already had talked about, like, you know, uh, the rise of domestic violence, uh, suicide going up. Yeah, depression. anxiety, depression. <clears throat> right. And so roof. right now, you, you, the, the argument is, and it's a fair argument, 
that okay, those things are all going up, but at, at you know at the cost of us potentially saving millions of lives potentially, mm -hmm. right? But after we've looked at this over a course of a year, you know those numbers might start to be enough that we you start to go like holy shit, you know X amount died from COVID, but this percent more people committed suicide, this percent more increased in obesity, this percent this more, more abuse went up. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, at that point, what will those numbers look like? And it, we'll have to really ask ourselves, was that the best strategy? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a hard conversation. We don't consider, and we see this in the fitness space all the time, we don't consider the whole sphere of health. Part of that is your whether or not you're sick. That's definitely a part of your health. But your mental state is a part of your health. The relationships around you are a part of your health. Your spiritual health is a part of your health. Your physical fitness is a part of your health. All of these things make up your health, and you have to understand and consider that. And at the end of the day, look, humans are extremely, we're such social creatures that in war, if you if you take a prisoner and you isolate them, that's against the Geneva Convention. It's such a, it's we know this to, for a fact. We're such social creatures, so we need to be able to consider all these things, and I think that the downstream effects nobody's looking at. And it was really sad to see my grandparents. And mm. in just three months, I could see my grand, my grandfather didn't have a stroke or anything. He's totally, you know, he's otherwise healthy. And I could see his health decline mm. because he was not around all the people that he cares about and loves and, you know, all that stuff. That's true. Anyway, that, uh, one last thing I want to say, Adam, you are totally right about that new uh, social media platform, Parler. Oh yeah, yeah. It was, it was totally what right. I said, huh? It is a, it is, it is totally a conservative. Yeah, it's got uh, a conservative uh, uh, lean, dude. It is so. I, so the way they advertise it is uncensored social media. Like we don't, you know, block things. <laughs> unbiased. It's, it's unbiased. A, yeah, yeah, it's, it's another they, they option. Un, unbiased social media. Yeah. Platform. So I went on there and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is the conservative version of like Instagram and and, and yeah. Facebook. And, and that's exactly. I mean, Fox did the same thing too, right? Like yep. they didn't come out and say like we're the conservative, uh, you yeah. know, source of news. We, no. They came out with were the unbiased, you know, right. source. Very, no, very no, similar. They, what did they say? Fair and balanced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was their tagline. <laughs> right, right, that's my favorite. But yeah, it's totally, it's totally, it's a More market like response. The opposing view. Going to be yeah. interesting though. Like I'm, I'm definitely. I don't mind it. I'm going to watch it closely. Oh, it's yeah. better than more, just one, right? I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I put myself on there um, just so I could follow it and see what's going on because I, I predict that this is going to be a trend that really grows. Yeah. Um, I really do. I just think the, that there's a big enough market for people who want to. Look, everybody likes to smell their own farts, right? And right now, you've got some I people <laughs> feeling like that on Facebook, and other people feeling like they're smelling other people's farts, and so they want to get on another platform. Yeah, that's weird. I, I think there's a big enough market for it. Well, that, listen, it's it's called social media for a reason. Yep. It's now it's now what media is for us. Many people get their news. My shit. My best friend gets his news from Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's what most people are doing that now. Yeah. And so, you know, there is there's a, a strong representation. I think that is, a, you know, center left leaning. And we don't have a, a strong of a representation on the you know center right leaning, uh -huh. and you're going to see it. So this is literally we're watching CNN and Fox happen on the social platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's, I don't see it, any center. It's the yeah I know but, oh, that was but, me, uh, yeah that was yeah. me being kind. Yeah, right? it's like, no, it's really I, I, left. I and see 100 percent like, here's a uh, bias. Here's what extreme. I do. Here's what I do, and it's annoying, but it works. Follow uh, people on both sides, even right, if you, right. even if you hate them, because I think the extremes are ridiculous. But I follow them anyway, right? Um, just so you can you you know what people are are being fed. Yeah, being loud about. Yeah, you know what people are being fed, and I love it because I'll see the same issue, the exact same issue, like when uh, the whole uh, what was it called, Chaz or Chop yeah, or whatever in Seattle. It's kind of both. Oh my god, the way that was rep re reported on on one side and the other, right. it was like, like a, they're just camping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a festival, and the other side's oh, yeah. like it's anarchy. Everybody's dying. Yeah. yeah. I was like, which who's right and what's going on here? And it's very interesting. Yeah, you don't know. First question is from Swayze Lifts. I've been in a deficit for several weeks and I'm seeing results, but I can't seem to shed the last few pounds of body fat to see my abs. Where do I go from here? Yeah. So this is where I love to uh, reverse diet you or, you know, have a put you on a mini bulk and also switch your programming. So like after I, if I have a client that I've been, you know, our goal is to get to a certain point and this is soup, by the way, this is very common. Uh, yeah. you get, it's like it, the last place to go. <clears throat> there, there's like, there's like these phases, like, you know, when you first get started, uh, it's, it's relatively easy to see results because anything is going to show change in your body. And then as you get leaner and leaner 
it, it actually becomes more challenging. It might become more mentally easier because you've built consistency and behaviors and habits now and a routine, but it does get more challenging as far as what the, the levels that you have to, to push yourself to or the science that you have to apply to really get to the next level. And so when somebody is, is training with me, and we we hit we run into this roadblock, and of course you know uh, I never let like one week be that too because there's a lot of things that could happen. Like you could have had a stressful week, uh, it could be that time of the month. You could have you could have other factors that are making you think you're not seeing as much results. So I never let like one week of whatever we're doing dictate a major shift in my programming or diet. But if you've had two or three weeks where you've really plateaued and you can't get that final last five or ten pounds or two or three percent body fat. That's normally my sign as a, as a trainer now. Okay, now I'm going to increase the calories for a while because you've been in a deficit. Your body's obviously getting very adapted to what we're doing. I'm also going to whoop, switch gears on how we're training and programming and put you in a different direction. And I'll only do that for a couple weeks and then go back to reverse yeah. or well, cutting you again. Well, they are saying that they've been in a deficit for several weeks and I'm seeing results. So what do you mean yeah. by several weeks? You've been in a deficit for three weeks? And now you and you're frustrated that you can't see your abs. What, what body fat percentage were you starting at? I mean, it's only if, if it's only a few weeks, right? That's a good point. And, and you're seeing results. Yeah, so it's like it, like it just sounds to me it just needs to keep going. Yeah, it's like you know I've been bench pressing for three weeks now and, and I can't you know add fifty pounds to my bench yet. What's going on now? Maybe you just got to do it longer. Yeah. You know I don't know how long you've been doing this. I typically if, if you started at you know if this is a, a man and you started at thirteen percent body fat. Um, and you're only doing it for several weeks and you're seeing results but not seeing your abs, I'd say keep going. Yeah, yeah. You might need to get a point. Yeah, you might need to get a little leaner. Um, if it's been like six weeks, seven weeks, and you started at twelve percent body fat and you really plateaued, then I would do what Adam's saying. And the reverse diet literally means you're just increasing your calories a little bit. Typically you'll add, depending on the person, anywhere between 150 to 300 calories a day. Focus on building strength and muscle. Now, here's this is something interesting about, about this process. Sometimes, if you do it right, depending on the person, reverse dieting, bumping calories, focusing on strength training, gets you leaner too by itself. No, that's why it's a, yeah, that's so, why it's a great method. Yeah, sometimes it's like it just that's what gets you leaner. Especially when you do it as, as calculated as what you just said. You mm -hmm. just add about 100 to 300 more calories. Like That's not enough to put on like pounds of fat. Right. And if you also change the program at the same time, normally that is enough to, to do both. Like you'll you'll definitely kind of kick you out of that out of that. Yep. And that, so my advice was I I want to make that clear. If you have a, a plateau but you're right. If you're still seeing results, yeah. then stay the course. You know, mm -hmm. stay the course. And 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 like I said, I, I wait for a good solid two weeks or I feel like nothing's happening. Like if I've got a client on a in a protocol that I feel confident we should be consistently dropping, and what happens sometimes is, you know, eventually we we plateau out. I'm gonna like, okay, stay the course still for another week. Let me evaluate what's going on. Okay, we're still at a mm -hmm. hard plateau. Now let's make some adjustments. And then that's one of the ways that yep. I would make adjustments. The last resort, you, you know, that none of us mentioned, you know, because we do get a lot of cardio type questions. Like cardio is like the very last thing that I, I want to add. I want to manipulate food and manipulate programming as many times and ways that I can before I just say, okay, now what I want you to do is, you know, 20 minutes of cardio every single day after your workout. Like that's it. That's an easy way to kind of break out of a plateau, but it's also the the last way that I want to do it. That's my, that's my final, like, okay, we're almost right where you want to be. Okay. Let's ramp up the cardio. Yeah. And here's the last thing you can do. You can also try building your abs. You, you may be in a situation like I was years ago where I would get down pretty lean but my abs really wouldn't really pop out. It was because I needed to develop my abdominals. As I got mm -hmm. them developed, I was able to see them at higher body fat percentages. Um, we have a program called the No BS Six Pack Formula that that really focuses on developing the muscles of the core and the abs so that they are visible uh, at higher body fat percentages. Next question is from Jose M two seventy nine. What are your thoughts on fitness trackers? How do you think they are best used? Yeah, so um, I know you guys are really big, you know, fans of fitness trackers. I didn't use them a whole lot in my career until you know relatively recently. You know, the thing I like about fitness trackers, as I've used them more recently, is just they give you a better idea mm -hmm. of your activity levels. They're not like the super accurate, you know. That don't look at them like that, but rather look at them as giving you kind of a picture, um, you know, a wide view of of what's going on. A lot of times, people think 
differently than than, than reality. You know, yeah. I, I remember uh, when, when Body Bug first came out years ago. This was a, one of the first legit fitness trackers. And, you know, we, we would mess around with it with clients. And I remember I'd have clients that we would notice that on the days that they worked out, they would actually burn less calories than on the days, than like on the weekends, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of crazy. And you'd never guess that. Like I would never have guessed that they would burn more calories on the weekend than they did uh, during the weekend they were working out. But then when we broke it down, because once we saw that data, I said, okay, well, what's going on? Is the machine broken? Mm. What's going on? I would start asking questions. Okay, I know you train with me Monday for an hour. How well, active are you the whole rest of the day? Yeah, what does your day look yeah. like? Oh, I, oh I, you're sitting the whole time. I, dry, I sit at work all day long. Okay, no. well, what did you do Saturday? Because Saturday you burned tons of calories. Right. Well, I washed the car, mowed the lawn, I went to the mall, went shopping. You know, I was out on my feet all day till about 5 or 6 o'clock at night. And then it became quite obvious to us. Oh, it was all this extra activity that you were doing that wasn't even considered a workout, but you were burning a lot of calories. That kind of awareness can help a lot. Yeah, I just look at it as acquiring more metrics, more data. And, and it, if if that really drives you into a healthy place, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. If it's if you're that kind of de like attention to detail oriented type person where uh, and I have trained quite a few uh, clients like this that are into Strava and they're into all these like crazy analytics that like your average person like doesn't keep track of every single rep, uh, you know, that they're doing. Like I used, I used to have somebody that I trained that would actually count all the reps and like w would tell me at the end, like how much volume he had and all this stuff based off of our workouts and uh, you know, was driven to to outdo that and like things like that, uh, where it, where it's like a motivator. Uh, but for a coach, I think it's it's helpful to just be able to kind of plot and put things out there so you actually can see uh, more factors involved in you know that individual. Because what we're trying to do really is to establish like what makes them unique and like where their patterns lie, behaviors, things like that. So if we can like peer into certain behaviors like. Uh, you do move more on the weekends mm -hmm. and that's an advantage, you know, I want to highlight and show you why and like how to incorporate that through your week. So if it unlocks things like that, where you can understand your behaviors better, I'm all for it. If it detracts you, if you get too obsessed with it, just like, you know, IFYM, like if you're talking about, uh, you know, like tracking all your macros constantly and you're neurotic about it and you, you get stuck there. Like I, I like I, that's where I like I start to to have a problem with it, and I've seen people get like too fixated on the exact data that they're doing to where that's what drives them uh, in all their efforts. So I'm for sure uh, the out of the three of us like the most hardcore about this. Like this is a mandatory thing for me, like for clients, it just is. And the reason why that is is I believe in my experience that almost everybody. Okay, and there's always exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, you know, 90% of clients that I've trained are stuck in that, you know, Sal loves to talk about the, the five steps of awareness or whatever that you always talk mm -hmm. about. 90% of everybody is, uh, is truly unaware. Mm -hmm. And the reason why- They're unaware that they're unaware. Exactly, yeah. the, for the first step, right? So they're, they're stuck at the first step. Kind of <clears throat> distance. And, and, the, and the reason why I, I'm so confident of that is I, I still am. I, I, there's very few people I've ever trained that have tracked as diligently as I have, taken it to a competitive professional level to where they were, I mean, everything I was for three years, right? And I still, you'll see, you'll see if you watch our old videos and today, like I'm not wearing mine today, it, but I still utilize it all the time. Like you'll all of a sudden I'll go on a kick where I decide like, you know what, I really want to, you know, take, take my fitness up a notch right now, or I want to lean out for whatever reason. And before I do that, I strap on my Fitbit again to get an, a gauge and idea of my. And here's what I've found over you know decades of using these tools, is that even as aware as I am, even as much as tracking that I've done, my behavioral changes or my behaviors change all the time. You know that what what we're currently doing right now because of COVID, uh, I have different movement patterns and habits right now uh, than just four months ago. Four months ago, um, I made it to the mall at least a couple times in the month. I grocery shopped way more often instead of getting it uh, Instacarted to my house. I was going to the gym where I was having to walk out of the park. So my behaviors are all and – and in that two decades – I've had three or four different career changes where different jobs require me doing different things. Uh, I found out new things about the way I eat, and so my eating behaviors change. So I'm, I, I'm always using it as a way to check back in with myself. 
and 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 to just confirm what I what I might believe, right? Oh, I think I'm doing about this right now. Well, let's track and let's see. Now, in and the thing that I know that like Sal and Justin like 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 the least about these tools, and I agree, and I think uh, Dr. Andy Galpin does a good job in his book Unplugged, kind of discussing this, is. We, we've taken the fitness space, like always, has taken something really good and valuable, and then we've just you know bastardized it. Now it's like it's this competitive market, and there's tons of money to be made in it, and everybody's arguing over which one is you know 3% more accurate, which one has a better UI, which one offers this feature, which one attack. It's like, okay, that's where this can get so nuanced and overkill for most people. Like I utilize the Fitbit li literally just for the, I want to see my steps mm -hmm. that what it's, it's estimating that I'm burning in calories uh, right now. And that's really it. That's enough to give me a really good idea of my activity level uh, and, and allow me to start to build some sort of a structure diet wise. What I don't do is I don't get hung up on the actual number. I don't go, oh, oh, that says 2,700 calories I burn a day. Therefore, I'm going to eat X amount of calories. That's not how You're I You're just work. looking at the trends. I'm right? just looking at the trends. And, and because I've done and be, when you've done this enough times, I know, like for me, uh, what, what, what a low amount of activity is, what a high amount of activity is, what is kind of an average range, what that looks like. And so it gives me insight on my current behaviors and my current habits of, of exercise, my current habits of movement. And then it allows me to start to adjust that from there. I don't get hung up on the exact number that the tool is feeding back to me. I'm using it as a gauge, the same way that I use a scale, the same ways that, that I use a body fat percentage. And I think they are incredible at giving people awareness of what they're doing. Because just like you both alluded to is most people, including ourselves who are professionals in this field, overestimate. Yeah. Or, or or underestimate. Yeah, underestimate calories and overestimate activity. Yes. Every time. Every time. And mm -hmm. I still do this today. Two two decades of being in this space, I still am always off mm -hmm. a little bit. And so I think they're incredible. Now, if they become something that you are, you know, so attached to and hung up on that it's it's like dictating uh, if you're neurotic about it, it becomes right. dysfunctional. And and, and and Dr. Andy Galpin gets into that, right? Like it's it's kind of like this, right? And and I think in his book he actually uses this analogy. Um before uh Tom Toms and uh uh what's Garmin's and all the navigation systems came out, I used to pride myself on being the person where once I go a place one time. Uh, you never have to tell me directions again. I just had this like photographic memory of remembering things and street names. I just I was really good at that. It, and this when these got popular was when I was about eighteen to twenty years old. And so once they came on, I thought they were really cool. It, they got it put into my car. Now fast forward ten years later, I am the worst. Yeah. Well, I can't. I still super relying on it. I've lived in San Jose for two decades. I still use the damn thing to go to. If I go to a new restaurant, even though I'm super familiar with this whole city, I still use the damn mm -hmm. thing because I become dependent on it so much. So you don't want to become like that. You don't want to become so dependent on these tools that you can't learn to kind of figure these things out for yourself. But also, don't be a fool. They help. I'm not going to go to a new city. And, and go to a, a store I've never been to and not use my tool. Mm -hmm. That's why I bought the damn thing. And I'm not going to go go get a map out and prove to myself I can figure this out when I've, when I've got the resources. But I'm also not going to become so dependent on it that I don't open my eyes and pay attention to my surroundings and learn what the hell where the hell I'm going. Next question is from Shell Keep It Fit. Any thoughts on eating for your blood type? You know, there's very, very little, if if no evidence, uh, that shows that there's any uh, that your diet should be dictated at all uh, by by your blood type. I have seen the arguments made for why you should eat, you know, for your blood type. There's again, a there's a few books that came out for that. For again, sure. there's really little or no evidence to support it, and and I, you know, I would guess that maybe the little bit of evidence that they try to make might have to do with the. The traits that tend to follow certain blood types, um, like if you're type O, like people from a certain area or region of the world, there tends to be a higher, you know, propensity of them to be type O versus type A or more B correlation or stuff. Yeah, and but here's the thing: let's just say that that your blood type does influence how your body reacts to food. It is but one factor among many, 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 many factors that dictate how you uh, should probably eat. Mm -hmm. You know, I could name a few right now. I could name your microbiome, for example. Your microbiome 
will affect how food, uh, you know, how your body reacts to food. What about the psychological aspect, the attachments we have to foods or the behaviors uh, that we that surround foods? What about the types of goals that you have? Uh, what about your immune response um, to foods? You know, all these, there's, there's so many different factors that determine what, how a diet is going to be for you in terms of if it's going to be good or bad. That just one, it's like when people do the DNA testing yeah. and there's, oh, my DNA test says that I should eat uh, mostly meat. But what if you're somebody that's super opposed to eating meat? What if you're a, a, a vegan for, for, you know, for, for reason, for moral reasons? Well, who cares what your DNA test says? You have to consider that as well. Um, what if your blood type, you know, test says that you, that you shouldn't eat bread, but what if you grew up in making bread, you know, with your mom and bread is something that's real important to you. And there's that value that it presents to you. Does that mean you should never eat bread? Well, no, there's lots and lots of different factors that determine uh, how food affects you. Not to mention that a lot of these factors change uh, as the context of your life changes and as you grow up and age. Well, that's the so, biggest thing I see. Yeah. I mean, your body is just constantly changing all the time. And I just see this as another opportunity for somebody that is looking for like one little flake of truth, right? Like this is like a, a big theme I see with how these diets pop up. They see one need that uh, they can fulfill and are, are one type of correlation. They've seen cases that uh, certain people have benefited because of, you know, this, this way of doing things. And then this becomes like a theme that they write a book about and then they profess as the way everybody should do well, it, which is just never works. It's an easy way to market. It always is. I mean, yeah. if I wrote a book that says, you know, the best diet for men and the best diet for women, right? People are like, oh, he knows me. Yeah, people will buy that. Yeah. yeah, so. I actually look at it exactly like every other diet. It's very, very similar, right? It's because yeah. I know that, so by the way, I have the, the most popular book on this. Like my uh, old roommate came uh, came to me because he did it and was like, oh my God, it's been such a game changer for me. Because and, and <laughs> he, he ate a healthy diet all Well, the and here's the thing, right? <laughs> yeah. And he, well, he was, you know, in his defense, he was actually a, a very healthy eater already. He just made the adjustments and changed and followed the protocol that it gave him. But what I tried to explain to him is that this is no different when a client comes to me and goes, Adam, my girlfriend is running the paleo diet and I started doing it and holy crap, I feel so much better. I lost all this weight. That is, that's the diet for me. It's like, okay, Hold on, let's unpack this a little bit. Because what I have found in my experience, it's not the diet it, so much as it is what you were doing before yeah, that you what you changed that you now eliminated. So, and that's what I see with the blood type thing. It's there's a lot of a lot of the stuff that that it tries to support the claims for it. it mostly is mostly correlation, not causation. It's not direct facts. That this is for this blood type. It's more so. We, and there's people I know listening right now. For sure, we have a big enough audience that there's probably thousands of people that have been following this diet and had great results from it. And I say to you the same thing that I say to the, the paleo client that comes to me or the ketogenic client or the vegan that swears by it and how amazing it is. Why don't you look into the things that you eliminated and pay attention more to that than what you're currently eating? And more than likely, that is the is the real key to what was is going on here and that's what's normally happening it's normal i don't know anybody who can say okay or maybe somebody who's really neurotic but the average person that can say i think my diet is perfect and i don't have any vices or any bad things that i allow in it every everybody sitting in this room would admit that there's things that they allow to kind of enter their diet that probably is not ideal for them. And if I put you on a diet that didn't allow that in your diet anymore, you'd probably feel the best you ever felt in your fucking mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. right. has nothing to do with that newfound diet. It has everything to do with whatever it was that was offending you. Very good point, because nine out of ten yeah. times when someone goes into a new diet, they become far more disciplined and structured because they're following this new diet. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what it is. And yeah, you know, the blood type, again, there's no science, there's really no science that really supports uh, any validity uh, to this to this type of diet. But even if there was, again, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Even if blood type does affect your how your body reacts to food, it is one factor among many, many, many factors. And there's one factor that nobody ever considers. Everybody looks at all the physiological stuff, but nobody ever considers the psychological stuff. And I'm going to tell you something right now. The psychological stuff is way more important. Yeah. It's way more important. When I coach clients, if I coach them specifically on the physiology of their body and the macros and the calories, if we do that, and I have other clients that I look at the psychology, why do you eat? 
Why do you choose to eat these foods? Yeah. What are the kinds of foods that you crave? What about when you're happy? What about when you're sad? And I coach that person based off of psychology. The one that I work with psychology and behaviors, their odds of long-term success are far, far higher oh, yeah. than the physiological ones. Is far, this far sustainable? Higher. Right. Like I always have to ask that question before we make any kind of radical shift. Like, look at that ahead of time. Is this sustainable? And then look and see what you're eliminating, what you're replacing, and what that does and how you yeah. feel. Do you guys remember making that switch with your clients when you stop looking at all the calories and macros and all that stuff so much and you start talking about behaviors? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like- Massive oh, like difference. It's like, oh, it's like a whole new universe. Yeah. Next question is from Grace Your Presence. What makes you most proud to be an American? Oh, Because wow. yeah. I'm a real American. <laughs> you know, um, I'll, I'll start this because- uh, you know, Now, being proud of being something that you had no choice to be, that's kind of an interesting question. I was born here. I didn't choose to be born here. But here's why I am proud of uh, America itself or why I, I look at it and I think- um, it's an it's an amazing example for the world. Now, when I think of America, I don't necessarily think of the country of America, but rather the ideas mm -hmm. uh, that it was founded on. The reason why I think of that is because the ideas that this country were founded on, they were not exercised perfectly, and they still aren't. But the ideas that they were found that this country was founded on is constantly driving America to change and improve itself. I don't know of any other country that criticizes itself and is willing to change painfully yeah. Yeah. decade after decade like uh, this country. I mean, uh, when you if you go back to the founding of this country, the ideas that it was founded with were truly crazy and radical in comparison to the rest of the world at that time. You had a country that literally developed a government. This, is, this was weird for the time. Nobody really did this before. But they designed a government to protect the people from government to protect the people from uh, tyranny. That's what the whole, if you read the Constitution and you look at the framework, you know, besides all the stuff we've added to it over the last you know, few hundred years, if you look at the framework, every single thing in the Bill of Rights is designed to protect people from tyranny. One of the things that, that, that they were trying to protect people from was tyranny of the majority. One of the biggest Peep, things that people have uh, are confused over is the you know we call America a democracy, which is partially true. We are a democracy, but we're not a pure democracy. We're a a constitutional republic, and we elect our officials democratically. Meaning, we vote for our officials, but we have certain things that are protected that no that a majority vote can't take away from you. For example, uh, freedom of speech. Your freedom of speech, even if 60% of the population votes that you shouldn't be able to say something. They can't take away your ability to say what you want to say. There's a whole nother process they'd have to go through to amend the Constitution. Now, these ideas were not exercised perfectly. You know, we had this concept of liberty that every person was born with rights, inalienable rights. And according to the founders, it's because they were bestowed upon us by our creator, by God. So God creates everybody. Everybody has these rights that nobody can take away because God gave them to you. But of course, when the country was founded, we had slaves. Women were not treated the same. They couldn't vote. So it wasn't exercised perfectly. But it was those ideas that drove the, the, that drove government to, to fight for the freedom of slavery mm -hmm. or to, for, to free the slaves, excuse me, that drove the civil rights movement. It drove... Uh, to give women the ability to vote. And it continues to drive. These ideas continue to push us. It's a constant refining process. Yes, to change and to grow. And it's these ideas that I think we should always defend. That's what makes me very proud. And I tell you something right now. The most, the people that you'll tend to find who tend to be the most, who understand these things the most are the children of immigrants because there's a contrast. Mm -hmm. You know, I am the the, the product of, of poor immigrants I know the opportunity that was uh, provided here because of uh, a lot of the freedoms that are here. I saw my I mean, my dad came here with zero education. He was very poor, and he, he created a, a middle-class life. I had a friend whose parents escaped the Soviet Union. They're the most staunch Americans you'll ever meet in your entire life mm -hmm. because his parents escaped real uh, tyranny um, at the time. We're definitely not perfect. We're far from perfect. I don't think perf perfection can ever be accomplished. But those ideas, the ideas that this country was formed on, 
are what continue to drive us. And again, I don't know any country that's willing to beat the shit out of itself yeah. over and over again to continue to progress and grow. And as painful as it is, it's freaking awesome. And I, you know, I hear stuff all the time I disagree with. People say things and yell things and do things that I totally disagree with, but I will always fight to defend the right to say and do those things because uh, I believe in those concepts. Yeah, and I'll always listen. I mean, we're the ultimate melting pot. I think that's that's the biggest thing that I I really appreciate the idea of America being the place where um, it's so culturally diverse. It's so diverse. Like individuals are so different across the board. You're just not going to find that in any other place in the world where, uh, you know, you can interact with so many different ideas and, and, you know, different types of backgrounds. And, uh, I think that, uh, we don't celebrate that as much as now we, we try to segment that off and divide and, 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 and really try to then regroup and, and, and try to go back to old ideas of where, you know, in other countries, everybody has the same background, same experience, same skin color, same everything. Uh, and, and I to me, this is where all the innovation happens is when you collectively bring everybody together and, and work together and unify and move forward. And I, I really just that that idea, I just don't ever want to die. I want us all to, to get back to that mentality. Oh, yeah. I, I've always I've always thought the whole, um, you know, pride or proud thing um, is 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 an interesting conversation because I, I like Sal, you mentioned, I, I don't feel proud uh, to be American. I feel blessed. That's what I feel. I feel I feel yeah. blessed that um, you know I'm I'm not one generation. I'm three generations removed from this country. My family came from Mexico. I've been to Mexico enough times to be glad as shit that you know my my great grandparents made their way this way and had kids in America. And then to your point, Justin, that I look around and say we have to be the most diverse country and you know innovation so much to start here sure there's tons of imperfections and areas that we can better but to your point sal that's one of the beautiful things about america is we are always evolving and changing and i feel like we evolve and change more rapidly than almost any other country around uh, and i think just the fact that we are so diverse and so many people migrate and come here speaks for itself Mm -hmm. I mean, that in itself is, I mean, you don't see that in any other country where people are flocking to get in so bad is because it is so great and it is so diverse. But, and I also recognize what comes with that. Like what comes with that are challenges. You know, you you have people with different cultures all melting in one area. We're going to have a little bit of- There'll be friction. Yeah, there's going to be friction. Yeah. And, and, and again, to Sal's point, that's what's beautiful about America is that even with all the friction and we, we're always trying to become better. And I think that- you know, I, I would like to see more empathy for for each other. I think that's what we, we lack mm -hmm. that sometimes, as and maybe that's the pride the pride sense. Yeah. Maybe sometimes we become so proud or so so caught up in being uh, uh, prideful over all this stuff, and we should have a little more humil humil humility. Excuse me, can't speak. And, and feel blessed that we all are in, in this situation and have a little bit of patience and empathy for our neighbor and and know that we all are working to have a better place. And whether you have a, a belief that it should be this way or I, I have that way, at the end of the day, that's what's great about here is we can both agree to disagree. Well, yeah. you know, well, free countries are only ever going to be as good um, as its people. That means that, you know, because we have a certain level of freedom, we have to be good moral people in order you know look, look at markets for example let's just talk about free markets for a sec a second free markets do one thing really freaking well they give the consumer what they want better than any other system in the world but what if all the consumer wants is drugs alcohol and pornography well that's what you're going to get a mm -hmm. lot of right mm -hmm. so it, it's it, it's a reflection of us and so we have to rise to be good people so that this this system provides us uh, what we want. But again, it's an idea. And it's an idea that, you know, as, as imperfect as we've been, that idea is what's driven us to progress. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Listen, 2008, okay? 2008 wasn't that long ago. Barack Obama was campaigning to become president of the United States. He campaigned and he openly was opposed to gay marriage. This is Barack Obama, Democrat, president. Everybody loves. And he said, I do not think marriage should be between a man and a woman. And that changed very rapidly. Now, if you said that, nobody would elect you almost nowhere. That's very, very rapid, rapid change. Again, it's not perfect, but, um, but it, those ideas of, 
liberty, of freedom, of, of protecting people's individual rights, which by the way, rights do not mean you have a right to other people or to other people's stuff. It means you have a right to the stuff that you you can speak, you can protect yourself, you can worship whatever, you can live the way you want so long as you don't infringe on the other rights of other people. But that idea is what pushes us to grow. It's also a painful one. I'll tell you what, you go to a Marxist country, you go to a country that that doesn't have these protections and try to be a capitalist there. Yeah. Try to speak out against what that government says you should do. They'll throw you to jail. They'll kill you. You know what? The one of the here's one of the beauties of everybody knows how anti-Marxism I am or anti-communism I am, right? Well, guess what? You can be in America if you want to a Marxist. You could literally yeah. have a you could have a, a pro you could have a whole protest and a parade praising uh, Karl Marx and and the 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 you know the past Soviet Union and whatever. And you're actually free to do that here. As much as I hate that and I disagree with you, tell me where you could do that in countries that don't value. Liberty and freedom. They don't. So, as again, as, and I know we're going through a difficult time in this country, but it's okay to take a step back and look. We've had all these protests, and that's beautiful. People are, are going out, and they're, pro, and they're Exercising free. Exercising their rights. And they're well, free to do it's so. It's also, I mean, good to recognize, too, to be, it's a positive thing that we have this division of progressives and conservatives. Oh, yeah. Um, I think of it just like the way we operate our Checks business. Checks and balances. Right. There is, there's always one of us who's trying to push us in a new direction or push us faster to do something. And there's always one of us that's going, uh, maybe we should ease in and slow. I don't think we should do that yet. And together we make great progress, right? And sometimes it's a little push and pull type of feeling, but you want that. You don't want one or the other. If you if everybody was conservative, we wouldn't move anywhere very fast at uh, at all. Mm -hmm. If everybody right. was so progressive, we'd probably have a lot of hard lessons. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we have this nice division of progressive and conservative people in this country, and we're kind of like it, it's, it's, it doesn't need to be so angry though. It doesn't need to be like that. It's like no. and that's why this is why mind pump work behind scenes. This is the way we are with the business. There's always a progressive person. There's always a conservative person in the conversation, and sometimes it flip flops. Sometimes one of us is more progressive about something, one of us is more conservative about something, and I feel like that's how our country is. I think where it gets bad is when people start to identify with one or the other, and they feel like they well, have to. Well, you're trying to impose those ideas by all means necessary. Well, and yeah, and the big problem becomes when you think the other person's the, the other person has a different opinion than you because they're evil. Right. Then there's nobody. There's no discussions. No. There's no compromise. It becomes there's, ideology. There's no listening. It's you're evil. That's it. And now, what do you do to evil people? You punch them. You kill them. You silence them. You jail them. That is a dangerous slope. You don't want to go down. Rather, the better approach, in my opinion, is to consider, and this is the truth. I'm not saying this is everybody, but consider that most people are kind of like you. We're all very, we're more similar than we are different, okay? And they're probably they probably have their opinions because they think it's better for people. Not because they're evil, right. but rather because they think it's better for people. Now their opinions different than yours, but they also want something to happen that's good. So now let's have a conversation. Right. Of course, if you think they're evil, I'm not I'm not going to have a conversation with Hitler. I don't right. want to hear your ideas. You're an evil person. Well, right. geez, man, if you think everybody on the other side is Hitler, you're going to have some problems. Mm -hmm. So anyway, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. At the end of the day, the big, big, big differences between men and women, generally speaking, are all about preferences and, uh, and how they've been marketed to. All the other stuff we kind of said – those are such small, you know, general differences, but they really don't make a huge difference. It's really about the the, the goals and the differences between what you want um, and.